Hey agents, it's Dispatch. It seems a lot of us have been struggling with the descent, and I think this is mainly because it's so different than what we've been playing for the past four years. We'll talk about the best strategies, weapons, talents, and skills, and actually maybe enjoy ourselves. I may be a couple months late, but there are some more talents that were added with the new season, so I'm kind of the first to break this news, maybe. Well, let's get stuck into it. First, let me say that I've only played solo, so this will be heavily geared towards solo play. Keep that in mind as we step through this. Speaking of going solo, let's hear a bit from our first ever fake sponsor, Shade VPN. Did you know that your sensitive data may be intercepted by unscrupulous PMCs? Did you know your location data can be stalked by murderous hunters? Get yourself and your mobile Shade server protected with Shade VPN. It will encrypt your data and secure it with the Department of Homeland Security. Only $19.99 a month for security with Shade VPN. Okay, now back to the descent. If you don't get a good start with a good skill or weapon, just exit the simulation and re-enter. There's no point in suffering through the first room with a pistol and a terrible skill, hoping for something good in the next. If you don't get something good in the next loop, you're going to be invested, but have nothing to show for it. And when you die, you'll just think about how much time you wasted and how much farther you could have gone if you had gotten a good option off the bat. I'm assuming you know the basics of the mode. First and most important part of this mode is positioning. The rooms are consistent, so you need to learn them and find where works best for you based on your weapons and playstyle. You need to position yourself so that you cannot get shot in the back. If you're in between diametrically opposing red doors, make sure you have cover for your back. Let me know if you'd like a breakdown of each room in a future video. You need to quickly survey the room, place any skills that you need to, take position, and prep your grenade. On that note, let's talk about grenades. These are most useful for canceling boss armor kits. If you have Mad Bomber, you can use them to make rooms go much faster by essentially clearing the whole wave from a door. As you get in higher loops, you won't be able to use these for clearing doors anymore as they won't do enough damage to actually kill the enemies and the number of doors means that you won't necessarily know what door to target anyway. So just focus on getting your skills set up and focus. Second most important thing is that you need to choose your talents and skills to defeat the nemesis. While some of these talents and some of the skills are good for rooms, you can get those later. I ran a 21 loop run with only the decoy and foam. Do not take any skills that can get hacked and kill you like a turret or a drone. The best skills for Nemesis are the foam as this completely stun locks them for a short duration in which they can't shoot back. It cancels their armor kits and will bring them out of cover. Decoy absolutely will draw their fire and they will expose themselves to maneuver on it. The explosive and shock traps are great if you can get it in range and can be thrown while remaining in cover. You need to get the traps to detonate around them so they have nowhere to go, otherwise the traps won't provide any benefit. The explosive and fire stickies can be blind fired accurately from cover and will act like the foam but was more of a damage benefit than a controlling benefit. The fire cam works well as well but is harder to aim without taking fire. All three of these skills risk self detonation so use them carefully. Shields can give you enough effective health points to get that damage out on the nemesis, but we'll talk more about that in a bit. If you don't have talents to support it, the shield will simply be guaranteed disorient on yourself that can prevent you from getting into cover. Basically, it will just get you killed. Almost every other skill is hackable or just not very good. I would recommend at least one of the above for taking on nemesis, if not two. Here's the little matrix I made to show the talent synergies. I put a link to the gear attribute sheet that has a table of all the available talents in Descent, so make sure you check that out to make sure you're familiar with all of them. It doesn't have the latest talents, but it's got the vast majority of them. This is the unofficial gear attribute sheet. This is where I get pretty much all of my info on weapons and stuff about the game in general, and it's been especially helpful in this mode, since it's hard to know everything that's in the mode without playing it over and over again. If you can get ones that synergize with both Nemesis and Room Clearing, do that. Otherwise, prioritize ones just for Nemesis. Nemesis is gating your other progress and is responsible for most of the rewards in this mode, that being the weekly project and some of the better drops. Because of this, you'll want to take some hard rooms first, as much as possible until you have a solid setup for Nemesis, then transition to easy rooms to get to them faster. 
there's no point waiting around for the best build meeting nemesis at loop 8 to fail and die that's just extra time and effort for nothing so let's talk about the exotic talents that you'll want to take breathe free agonizing bite plague or bullet king the other exotic talents simply don't work whatsoever with nemesis he can't be one shot by sandman he has no weak points for blind justice there are no ads to kill for dr home or bloodsucker so do not take these talents for your rooms before nemesis unless you have no other choices incessant chatter is risky because you have no other ads to proc it off of so i wouldn't necessarily recommend this either a special exception to this is the recently added regicide regicide is the regulus talent Headshot kills create an explosion. The descent meta has already slanted towards going for headshots. This just puts that meta into concrete. This can wipe out an entire door with one shot. The big one shot weapons are absolutely broken with this and breathe free. Of course it doesn't work for Nemi, but it's so good for room clearing that it makes things so much faster I'd say it's probably the top pick. After all, the faster you make it to Nemi, the less fatigued you are and it ensures that you're pretty much guaranteed to get there. Let's move on to non-exotic talents. Possibly the most important talent is trauma. You only need one level as it's unlikely the fight will last long enough to proc it twice, even at max level. This talent will stagger Nemesis and give you the opening you need to get the initial damage off. Once they start popping a medkit, use your skills or grenades to interrupt it and continue burning them down. Most important after that is Entrench and Leadership. Entrench, once you get a couple of levels, activates very early and requires no other talents to work like Clutch or something else does. It works at any distance so you can heal back from Nemesis damage very easily while remaining in cover. Being out of cover with the Nemesis is extremely risky as they will absolutely delete you nearly instantly even with taking armor upgrades at every opportunity up to loop 8. Leadership is super easy to proc and can give you a bunch of bonus armor. Keep in mind you can cover to cover on the same piece of cover that you're already on. All it takes is like 2 feet to proc it. Unlike in Trench, it will work even if you have full armor or half armor or any amount of armor. The other blue talents just aren't a good fit for Nemesis. Adrenaline Rush has too short of a range. If they get that close, you're basically dead. Insulated won't give you enough to actually help. Preservation relies on kills, so that's out. The shield talents require a shield, which totally skews your build and when Nemi deletes your shield, you're basically guaranteed to die due to the confuse, as we talked about earlier. For damage talents to take on Nemesis, there are a ton of options, each with their own synergies, so there's not really a decisive best in slot. Also the other talents above are so powerful that I'd take them over a damage talent most of the time if it's a choice between two. However, some damage talents that stick out to me are Composure, Overwatch, Allegro, Gunslinger, Intimidate, and Obliterate. Composure is the most consistent talent in this mode since you're going to be in cover anyway so it'll always be active. Gunslinger is a bit of a sleeper pick. It can be difficult to manage but it's much less finicky than versatile while giving you a big per level bonus than the other damage talent options. Especially with Bullet King where you don't have to worry about reloading you can just lay into Nemesis and swap whenever the bust times out. Vigilance is a common pick in the base game but in this mode you will take tip damage especially at higher levels and running a shield to avoid losing the buff is just asking to get shot in the back. Don't take this talent. Companion's biggest weakness is that Nemi will hack any skill close to you so that's just a recipe for disaster. Don't take this unless you pass Nemi already. Breadbasket is worthless. And Precise is also not great since most weapons already have a 70 to 100% headshot damage multiplier inherently. Spark is okay but relatively short and requires a damage skill. Better than in sync but not top tier. Obliterate will give you really high damage especially if you have an automatic weapon but you need the supporting crit talents, surgical or agonizing. While vindictive can give you high critical hit chance and damage it won't work against the nemesis so don't bother taking it before reaching them. Surgical also takes a lot of stacks to really give you a workable critical hit chance so I would only take Obliterate if you get Agonizing Bite. And if you get Agonizing Bite, definitely take Critical as it's just free damage that's mostly multiplicative. Speaking of multiplicative, let's talk about the other sources of damage that multiply together. I know some other creators have talked about this, but as far as we know, the damage buckets work the same as they do in the normal game. 
meaning weapon damage is its own multiplier, total weapon damage is its own multiplier, and amplified damage is its own multiplier, and critical hits and headshots are their own multiplier. Sadist and Eyeless also synergize with the top tier trauma talent, though the blind bleed won't last very long. The name of the game here is that you need to be able to put the maximum damage on Nemesis during the window of opportunity, and if you take damage, you need to be able to heal that back without exposing yourself to more damage. We're mainly relying on our exotic talents to provide the damage bonuses. Ignited synergizes with the flame chem and the sticky, however these do proc a lot even without those skills. If you've got those queued up, they can even proc without skills on Nemi, which is huge. Those damage boosts are massive. They don't help much if you're one-shotting everything anyway, but for burning down Nemesis, since you can't one-shot them, you're going to get insane value. Pair them with Vindictive for rune clearing and you've got a crazy wombo combo. Every level after the first adds a 5% increase to the bonus. From 20 to 25, 25 to 30, 30 to 35, etc. The final multiplier that we haven't talked about is plain old weapon damage. You've got your choice of unhinged, optimist, or close and personal. And now with the update, we also have pummel, rifleman, and in sync. Close and personal requires a kill, so that one's out. Even in rooms, 3 meters is ridiculously close, and at max level you get 7 meters, which is still really hard. At this range, you're getting to the point where it's actually hard to kill enemies because of the camera shenanigans. Unhinged is a relatively large bonus that I definitely pair with steady handed optimized brace. Optimist is completely negated by Bullet King, so I'd wait until you get your first exotic talent before specking into it. If you didn't get Bull King, definitely spec into this as it's one of the best damage talents. At max stacks, the damage will go from 0% to roughly 540%. Bonkers. Even if you're only dipping into half the mag, that's still an average of 130% weapon damage. Due to the frenetic nature of this mode, mag dumping is pretty much a given, so you're going to be getting a good bonus pretty consistently. Rifleman provides another source of weapon damage but a small amount with a short timer. You need to be on the ball getting headshots for this to work and you're likely to lose it in the transition between doors. I really like this talent but like concussion I think the timer just might be a little too short. Decent against Nemi if you can hit the headshots at that range. In sync is tremendous for room clearing but any skills that can reliably proc this will be turned against you for Nemi. These skills are incredible for doing room clearing as they provide aggro and damage and this talent gives a lot of damage to both. Originally I thought it wouldn't be good for Nemi, but the more I think about it, it's probably still very solid for Nemi as well. Usually I'd say the timer is too short for use without the types of persistent skills, but the Nemi fight is so short that you should be able to burn him down within 10 seconds if you're doing it correctly. Hit him with the riot foam or throw a decoy to proc the first 5 seconds, burn them down, then hit them with the other skill and burn them down the rest of the way. The additional skill damage is nice as well, and you'll be prepared to hit higher floors after an Emmy. The yellow talents are getting pretty crowded with good options after this update, so I'm not sure if this is in the top 6, but definitely worth taking if you see it. Pummel. Top tier for clearing rooms, brings a little bit of steady handed and incessant chatter functionality by refilling your mag, hugely helpful. The extra damage boost is very very solid too for clearing that first and second door. It may time out on you, but honestly, It'll just wreck. Don't expect to have it active against Nemi. The bonus is a little less than we might want, but it's another weapon damage talent when there aren't many consistent options, and I'd say this one is probably the best of the bunch. Intimidate synergizes with leadership and adrenaline rush. It might be more trouble than it's worth to keep it up. That can distract you and get you killed. But if you master it, you'll be doing a lot of damage. I'm assuming it works like it does in the base game where it amplifies weapon damage, even though the wording in Descent makes it sound like it's additive. Either way, since there still aren't that many good sources of weapon damage in Descent, it's still a really good pick. The range has been increased to 25 meters, which is perfect for most rooms. It synergizes super well with Bloodsucker, Leadership, and Adrenaline Rush. Top pick, and even works for Nemesis. Take this and make sure you get two or three bonus armor talents to activate it. All right, so we got our build. How do we play the Nemesis? Start by taking the high ground as this really, really helps. You can shoot them easier while they're in cover, 
Aim skills and grenades easier and allows you to back up out of their line of sight. Before they appear, you use a cover to cover move to give you bonus armor from leadership. When they appear, adjust immediately if necessary to secure your distance and cover from them. Keep your distance and be patient. This fight can be completed quickly, but you'll also die very quickly if they're able to bum rush you. Nemi, talent, Nemi telegraphs their moves very heavily. Make sure you use grenades or a skill or run when they're about to deploy a skill. Other than that, hit them with the skill or grenade and burn them down as fast as possible. If your bonus armor runs out, do a cover to cover to regain it. If your armor gets obliterated, pause, move slightly, pop out and hit a headshot to proc and trench. The slight movement should give you an extra fraction of a second to shoot as the enemy has to adjust to your new position. You can also pop an armor kit. While you have Nemi under a status or fighting a decoy or rolling out of the way of a grenade, this is your best opportunity to secure the kill. Make sure you're reloaded and ready before you use those tools. All right, so that covers Nemesis. What about rooms? First, before you enter a room, make sure your skills are off cooldown and all your weapons are loaded. Kind of goes without saying. You can sneak a peek inside before you actually come in to see where the red doors are. As soon as you get in, your first priority should be finding as many red doors as you can and selecting the best door to set up on. So how do we set up on doors? Door setup is probably the most important part of the scent because you are going to be doing a lot of it. Some people recommend being in the door's face to kill the first door quickly and then get to the next door as fast as possible. Others prefer to sit back and cover. My recommendation is to find the most isolated door and stand so that you can see it as soon as it opens straight on so long as you don't have your uncovered back facing another door. This way you can shoot the enemies at the quickest opportunity thereby reducing your incoming damage, having the enemies funnel for more damage and to get through the room faster. What I mean by isolation is mainly just having your back or sides covered so that you're not shot from other doors. Getting shot will cause you to be aim punched which can drastically reduce your effectiveness as well as obviously taking damage. Obviously take the optimal range of your weapon into account. For rooms where you can't aim straight into the door without exposing your back, you can sit in low cover pointed towards the door with your front exposed but with your back still covered. The aim of the game here is to reduce angles on you at all costs. Getting shot in the back will be the thing that kills you the most in this mode, so controlling the angles as much as you can is paramount. Special aside for the outcasts, make sure you aren't too close to the door because of the exploders obviously, and make sure you're situationally aware of any that might be coming from the other doors. Nothing will end your run faster than getting hit by an exploder, it's pretty much guaranteed to kill you. With the other factions, this is much less important, but of course, be mindful. In easy and medium rooms, place your skill on the other door. Remember, the idea is to make sure that you don't get shot in the back, so you need to get the enemies on the other door to stay in the area and or be distracted while you kill the first door. Once you kill your first door, move on to the next door as soon as possible. If you have a skill that can be placed ahead of time, set it on the door that you are not aiming at to have it ready. This includes stickies, turrets, straps, even the oxidizer. This will help cover your back, delay the enemy from their flank, and hold them in place for when you're ready to turn around and kill them. If you can, prepare a grenade for the door you are aiming at. When the counter reaches zero, throw it. You'll get better at the timing, and if you do it right, it will wipe out or at least greatly damage the wave in the door. For hard rooms and rooms at later levels, traps can sometimes cover more than one door, and turrets and decoys can be placed in line of sight of multiple doors. Otherwise, just have your skill ready to deploy for the doors that you are watching. As more and more doors are activated, take a more conservative position to be able to control the space and minimize your angles. Since the next wave spawns immediately after you kill the last enemy from the first wave, make sure you're positioned properly or you will have a bad time. I wouldn't recommend trying to grenade the enemies in the second wave because it's way harder to time and you'll likely get shot while trying. You'll do more damage and be much more prepared if you just focus on killing the enemy and immediately being prepared to shoot the next wave. As you progress in loops, you will encounter medics and grenadiers, and these of course become priority targets for killing as fast as possible. Getting knocked out of cover, especially in these rooms where you can be surrounded and stuck on low cover, will get you shredded. Some enemies will drop special ammo boxes for their buddies to pick up. These are high priority targets as well. Special ammo enemies can wreck your run. Detonating the box is pretty easy if you just shoot it. 
bosses are very tough compared to other enemies. Make sure they don't get special ammo most of all because they are so hard to kill, so you will likely get shot by them. Bosses do a lot of damage but for the most part can be avoided fairly easily, especially due to the large size of the arena rooms. Kill the rest of the enemies so you can focus on the boss. During the battle with the boss, crowd control skills are extremely good like the riot foam. Bosses have at least one armor kit and on the higher difficulties they might even have more. Skills and grenades should be used to draw them out of cover and to cancel the armor kit. Be patient and don't push them unless you're absolutely sure you have the damage necessary. When you only have one weapon and therefore only one ammo pool, I'd recommend using your pistol on the last enemy in a wave unless it's a boss, so long as you're confident. Reload your main weapons and pull out your pistol to ensure your weapons are ready for the next wave and to save some ammo. Also, since most of the engagement distance are very short in these rooms, go for headshots, especially in the early loops, it literally doubles your damage with pistols. That's more than any talent will do. Also, make sure you're buying special ammo at the later loops. It's extra damage and gives you ammo back. You'll reach a point where you don't need your credits as much, so this is a great investment. For talent selection, prioritize red talents, as there is a much larger pool of these than the other types, so you'll want to give yourself a leg up on the RNG. Also, as enemies get tankier, you'll need more damage to deal with them effectively. There have also been some damage talents added to the yellow talent pool that we already talked about, so I would prioritize those second. Of course, if you're lacking in any one area, such as how only having one blue talent and barely surviving, that talent type should take priority. Alright, now let's talk skills for later loops. The best skills are probably the Assault Drone and the Striker Turret. After that, almost any damage or crowd control skills are useful. Awkward skills are bad in the base game and especially bad in Descent for the aforementioned axiom that distraction is death. This means the Bombardier drone is once again a hard pass. Repair skills are let down by the fact that defensive talents are so so strong in this mode that they're not even competitive. Combine that with the fact that repair talents are extremely rare and repair skills are also incredibly rare and that you need two of them and that you'll be building a repair skills build after Nemesis means these skills should be avoided at every turn. The remote pulse and the scanner pulse, I don't even know why these are in the mode, please no. The defender drone doesn't synergize with anything and doesn't have any talent support. Leave it in the bin just like in the base game. Finally the booster hive. There's a potential here on very high loops, if you're running an insulated setup combined with the Hive's Hasbro might make you immune to hazards. Combine this with companion and you might have a good setup, it just seems so ridiculously niche that I just can't recommend it. Shields. Oh shields. If your shield breaks, you'll be disoriented out in the open with no way to get into cover. In addition, very few rooms have high cover, almost every single piece of cover is low cover which means your back is always going to be exposed with the shield. You also move slower and won't have access to the really powerful and consistent cover based talents. The shield talents are strong, particularly for group play, so maybe in that setting you can run these. Protector gives a bunch of bonus armor to protect your back and Vanguard will keep your shield up for at least 5 seconds, but you're relying on getting the right weapons, right talents, and right skill. So not only is it difficult to build because of RNG, it's high risk to play. It's definitely fun to play, but I'd stay away from it due to its drawbacks. That leaves the keepers to be the foam, fire chem, oxidizer, explosive trap, shock trap, all the stickies, jammer pulse for those higher level rooms with black tusk, sniper turret, striker turret, assault drone, seekers, stinger hive, reviver hive, and decoys. These are the best skills for rooms. If you want to grab a skill tier or two along the way, it couldn't hurt, especially to get more chem charges, for example. One thing that I will say about the Reviver Hive real quick. I have had my Hive fail to deploy automatically twice when it was off cooldown and not disrupted. So don't lean on the Reviver too much. Since your weapons are capable of so much damage, make sure you're not trying to do too much. Trying to get extra fancy with your skills, grenades, armor kits can distract you and getting distracted can mean the end of a run. Defensive talents require the use of your weapon. Killing enemies to reduce incoming damage requires the use of your weapon. 
Essentially, your survivability is depending on you using your weapon effectively. Don't lose sight of that. Remember, distraction is death. Let's talk builds and talents for later loops. The best exotic talents are Regicide, Breathe Free, Plague, Incessant Chatter, Bullet King, and Bloodsucker. Agonizing Bite will lose its effectiveness as the number of enemies increase, so for a crit build, transition to maxing out Vindictive above all else, then Surgical, Critical, Obliterate, Strained, and Clutch. If you get a better exotic talent, switch to that. Agonizing will still help you with those bosses who are much, much tankier than other enemies, but there are better options. Plague is a little less good for runes because the range is pretty short, but it is damage and you can hit enemies in cover, so it helps you go that much faster. Plague ticks are based on bullet damage, so make sure you've got a weapon with high bullet damage active to have the highest tick damage. You can stack with a low bullet damage fast firing weapon to build stacks and then change over to a high damage weapon for maximum effect. You'll see those ticks increase in value when you swap. If you spec into Optimist above a couple levels, don't spec into Bullet King, obviously. You'll just be losing a bunch of damage. Instead, you can go for faster reloads and bigger mags with steady handed, fast hands, braces, lucky shot, etc. You can run incessant chatter with Optimist and get good results. This should pretty much guarantee that you don't bottom out the mag and have to reload because the 540 some percent damage is going to be ludicrous. I also wouldn't increase my mag size with Optimist unless you're really needing it. If you get a huge mag, you're not going to be getting those higher damage numbers. Incessant chatter is ridiculous. It is super easy to proc, you just reload as the door opens, and you get ridiculous fire rate and free ammo. Your DPS goes through the roof, allows you to blow through some rooms super fast. Make sure you take some magazine size upgrades and damage to make sure you can secure the kill before your mag runs out if you're not running Optimus. Bloodsucker finally, finally hits its stride in this mode. In the normal game, it's really, really hard to keep the stacks going, even on something like Lincoln Memorial. But in this mode, you can absolutely keep trucking with virtually infinite bonus armor. You're constantly going to be killing, and the rooms are relatively small, and it doesn't interfere with any other bonus armor talents, so it doesn't compete like normal repair talents do that affect your normal armor. Adaptive Instincts would be the best talent in the entire mode if it didn't fight for UI space on your weapon. I haven't checked the talents to see which ones will override adaptive, but going off of the normal game, the majority of talents would compete, including all the weapon talents, that being close and personal, unhinged, optimist, and pummel. Also preservation, which is a good blue talent, vindictive, and not to mention almost all of the exotic talents. There's no way I'd take this and sacrifice breathe free, regicide, incessant, or bullet king. The red talents don't change much for rooms. Keep building on the build you've already got. Pummel and Concussion get significantly better when you're in a room. Okay, now for the blue talents. The repair talents for normal armor compete with each other since you can't get over 100% armor. These talents are Entrench, Preservation, and Clutch. They do have different procs, but I'd recommend just sticking with one or two of these talents and focus on something else when you're making your selections. Clutch requires, even at max level, that you take a lot of damage and requires crits and is best used with a high RPM weapon. This talent is super good with Agonizing Bite, but since we've got better exotic options, I would recommend against using this, especially with Preservation being in this mode. Speaking of Preservation, ridiculously good for cleaning rooms. Efficient. You only get so many armor kits, especially at low level. That being said, the proc chance is pretty low and increases by a bizarre 7% every level. I think the 10 seconds in the description refers to a cooldown effect so you can't just keep spamming armor kits and expect to get most of them back. This is good for saving you some armor kits, but it's dubious compared to some of the other options. In the situations where I need a bunch of armor right away, I'm usually surrounded and taking the time to proc an armor kit would get me killed. I think they should change this talent to increasing the armor kit's speed. Kits are probably the best against Nemesis, but in that fight you shouldn't need more than 4 armor kits. Regardless, it's good if you find yourself popping kits in clutch situations, bad if you're the type that is distracted by kits. I suspect that at high level rooms, combat is so chaotic that you don't have time for popping kits. You just need to proc your other blue talents to stay alive and kill the enemy, or you'll be surrounded and annihilated. 
Adrenaline Brush is very good for rooms. It procs and reprocs often and can give you even more bonus armor. Sit and cover, and just as the door is open, do a cover to cover two feet away. Adrenaline Rush and Leadership will proc to give you massive bonus armor. Any armor you lose will be cooped by Bloodsucker or Preservation. If you get into a really bad spot and are too hurt to kill the enemy, Adrenaline will give you that extra bonus armor to maybe take the fight. You can also cover to cover to get leadership and or pop a headshot to proc and trench. So essentially stick with leadership, entrench, preservation, and adrenaline for your blue talents. Alright, now for the yellow talents. There have been some significant additions to this category, so now it's a lot more crowded than before. First, reload negating talents. Salvage is an interesting talent, basically an inferior pummel. Palma has a guaranteed proc after 3 kills, so roughly 33%, whereas Salvage starts at 20% and goes up from there. At this point, there are a lot of good options that essentially do Bullet King's job, but just stick with Pummel or something more reliable than Salvage. The sustained talents are Extra, Lucky Shot, and Fast Sands. Fast Sands gives you a massive reload boost, but given the plethora of talents that remove reloads entirely, skip this one. Lucky Shot is straight up just a better version of Extra. If you have to, take Lucky Shot, but in this category, there are still better options. The handling talents are Steady Handed, Braced, and Optimized. Steady Handed also works to refill your magazine, but it's a bit of RNG as to when you will get the stacks of rocket. Definitely a top handling pick as it gives you a larger average amount with no downside. Optimized is fine, but such a small amount that it's not super noticeable. Braced is obviously a better version of Optimized if you're playing cover. However, I'd just stick with Steady Handed and the damage options. Our damage talents in the yellow talent pool I've already talked about before. Ignited, Sadist, Eyeless, Vindictive, and Opportunistic. Ignited, Sadist, and Eyeless are top picks. Take one or all of them and they will proc like crazy, especially with our trauma must pick. Vindictive, of course, only helps a crit build, but it also helps allies, so if you're running in a group, it's definitely front, a front runner. Opportunistic, of course, only applies to shotguns and only applies to damage after the first bullet, so it loses some of its value for one-shot builds. Skill damage talents. Shock and awe, destructive, empower, tech support, capacitive, spike, and in sync. The biggest problem with these talents is that your weapon is your biggest damage source, especially with the lack of exotic talents for skills, so these talents are where you're going to get your biggest benefit. Regardless, let's step through them. So those talents are where you're going to get your biggest benefit. Regardless, let's step through them. Shock and Awe only requires putting a status effect on the enemy and lasts a long time. However, the repair skills are lackluster in this mode, so we're probably looking for the skill damage bonus here. It synergizes with Trauma, which is a must take. Destructive is solid, and just a better version of Spike, unless Spike is in a different damage pool, which is hard to tell in this mode. Tech Support is just an inferior version of these two. Capacitive is only really a value to the Oxidizer Chem Launcher, so maybe take it if you get that skill and be careful not to nuke yourself with it. InSync is the best of these options as we already discussed. It aids our weapon damage with the skill damage being a nice bonus. The other skill based yellow talents are worthless. Don't bother. So, our options. We've got Trauma, Eyeless, Sadist, Ignited, and Steady Handed. What should our last spot go to? If you're using a damage skill, shock and awe are in sync. If you're running a crit build, vindictive. If you're using a shotgun, opportunistic. Whew, okay. Weapons. I almost forgot about weapons. So let's get into it since mostly they're the same for rooms and for nemesis. So this section will cover all parts of this mode. Shotguns, particularly M870 and Super 90, are incredible and able to one-shot even multiple enemies at once. These are also particularly good at detonating weak points, especially cleaner flamers, for big AoE damage. Though they do take a while to reload, you can usually do this while you're moving to take out the enemies from the next door, or with incessant chatter or pummel. They are super ammo efficient, and with bullet can become the highest DPS you can probably get. In addition, they have very good ammo economy due to their high damage per shot. Rifles, particularly the M1A, are also incredibly good. High damage means better ammo economy, one shot kills for instant TTK, and high accuracy means better weak point detonation and headshots. This makes them viable at close range while the good optimal range as well makes them good for those bigger rooms like the arenas and when you can't effectively close the distance. I consider a shotgun rifle combo to be the meta set for descent, especially in the first loops when you might struggle with ammo and with the introduction of regicide making the one shot build absolutely 
insane. Pistols are also very good, honestly, and very accurate when blind firing. They're all good, but especially the Disiernos, which have high enough damage to one-shot enemies to the head if built for it, and the quick reloads aren't really a problem. A good pistol will supplement your build nicely, so don't sleep on them. ARs and MLMGs are pretty similar, with the ARs in decreasing in accuracy as they fire, while LMGs do the opposite. ARs overall seem to be more accurate, but less damage. Make sure you don't try to use an LMG with a shield. I accidentally forgot about this one loop and died in the first room, confused and fumbling around, panic switching weapons. LMGs are slower firing and have longer reload times, so are better with ammo economy, while well, ARs are a little bit less good. The RPK and L86 are particularly good to, to their high ammo capacity and faster reload than other LMGs. I wouldn't recommend the other LMGs unless you have Bullet King or possibly Incessant Chatter. ARs are pretty consistently decent, just don't pick the FAMAS or the M4 in your first loops as it will chew through ammo. SMGs are mostly mediocre or terrible, but there is one that's better than every AR and LMG, the PP-19. It has a 54 round mag at base, which is double most of the SMGs and second only to the M60 out of any weapon. I haven't seen a P90 yet, but if it is in this mode, it is also a good choice for the high magazine, but it has a much lower bullet damage, so its ammo conservation is worse. These large magazines aid a lot of talents and makes killing that first door so much easier. In addition, the PP-19's relatively high weapon damage makes it pretty decent for ammo economy. Of the rest of the SMGs, definitely don't take the tactical vector or any of the vectors really. Their low bullet damage makes for terrible ammo economy. Their magazine sizes are tiny so you'll be rolling constantly unless you have Bullet King. It doesn't have enough damage to make the incessant chatter work either. Finally, MMRs. MMRs are the bottom of the barrel. Bolt actions are too slow to capitalize on door killing, and semi-autos don't have enough ammo. The ranges in descent just aren't long enough to need them. The damage also is wasted on most enemies as you can overkill them with a the rifle anyway. The biggest issue, however, is that their accuracy while moving is atrocious. You have to move and react a lot in descent, and using MMRs requires you to be stationary for at least half a second for the reticle to narrow down. You're guaranteed to have a bad time, so don't take an MMR under any circumstance. Rifles are just better in every single way. Alright, so just to recap everything, our best build is Regicide, Breathe Free, Bloodsucker with a rifle or shotgun and a high damage pistol. Any combination of good red talents, leadership, adrenaline rush, preservation, and entrench for blue talents. Trauma, Ignited, Sadist, Eyeless, Steady Handed, and your choice of last yellow talent. Okay agents, that's my recommendations for how you can easily dispatch Descent. Did you agree with my recommendations? Do you have any sleeper picks that you think are underrated? Throw those down in the comments and let's get this discussion going. Click those like and subscribe buttons just like you're clicking on heads of true sons with a solid headhunter build. Until next time agents, this has been Dispatch, take care out there.